Hello everyone, in this video I'd like to demonstrate four games I've played recently online um, on playok.com at onlinego.ogs.com and one game I played versus the GNU Go which is around 6th Q Go playing program, it's not using neural networks uh, just the Monte Carlo research algorithm and some uh, hard-coded knowledge but all these games are quite similar uh, so the general idea uh, I'd like to share is what one needs to do in order to break through this absolute beginner level where you just know how to put the stones maybe know a couple of Joseki's but essentially you're not able to play and uh, turning to somewhat I don't want really to call this reasonable, but somewhat, somewhat apply where you can do something where, where, when you can understand something. So I would rather just show you the games and quickly walk through the key moments within the games. And after that, I would like to share some thoughts in regards to which particular steps did it take me to gain this uh, kind of current level now and again um, I had some videos like two weeks go progress etc so for those of you who may think that <laughs> I did know something already well not really like uh, I started absolutely from scratch and those early uh, games horrible games has been documented as well on this channel. So anyway, let's just quickly walk through the games and then I'll, then I'll try to uh, summarize the concepts and what, what I consider to be the most important steps, uh, decisions, and I don't know, efforts to become, well, let's call this level sing, single digit Q uh, level player because it's really hard to say like from ninth to... I don't know, maybe seventh, sixth, maybe. It's not stable, so it's, it's hard to say. I would always say just the uh, lower single digit queue, so higher than ninth queue and lower than the fifth queue. So that's, that's the level that I've managed to reach so far after about uh, two years of being familiar with Go. But essentially, time I've been spending on studies was like a couple of months. Uh, two years ago, and now maybe another month. So totally, I don't know, maybe three months, maybe four months. Uh, no more than half a year anyway. So most of the time, I, I just didn't have time for go. But anyway, so uh, enough words, and let's go into the game. So the first game, I was playing Whites, uh, playok.com. Uh, eventually, uh, I am... 1.5 points uh, below opponent, but for some unknown reason, opponent has resigned. And also, engine shows that uh, the position I, I could easily win this uh, if I didn't make some chicken moves. So, I would like to open the patchy engine and we'll set this to analyze a bit later. So, let's go through the game. So, opponent starts with uh, I'm not sure, this is probably called mini Chinese. Or I'm not sure if this is mini Chinese, but the Chinese opening would be here. Maybe this is called mini Chinese. I'm, I'm not sure, really. And, well, to be very honest, uh, th this kind of position, I don't know yet how to respond to properly. So I was playing uh, based on general considerations. So I just split his uh, groups into two parts. And this and this uh, points... Uh, Mi, which is like you play here, I play here, you play here, I play here. But he considers playing like this, which is okay. So I'm making the two space jump. I have a base now, and he's in. He is starting attacking my base, which is also quite natural. I don't know probably uh, well after this move, I've realized that maybe that wasn't really that great uh, solution. But on the other hand, yeah, like why not? So uh, here. Uh, that would be a cut, so, uh, but it turns out that, yeah, actually, I'm losing these stones. So, uh, I don't remember really. Uh, yeah, probably I just misread 
probably I just misread. Like fighting is my weakest uh, part in the game, but I'm working on fighting. And uh, I would say a few words about this a bit later during the analysis, maybe some other games. Uh, so here, um, what I am trying to focus at, I'm trying to, so I need to make a living group that would be breaking into the center. So I'm just sacrificing these two stones. Okay. Um, so yeah, this, these two stones are now absolutely dead. And we just continue some natural development. So, uh, Black's corner could have become sort of big after this move. You, you know, like if Black takes all this, this would become really huge. So I, I don't, don't really want that to happen. So my solution is to play like this. I probably, if Black just goes from this side, this is going to be probably good enough to kill. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, he, he considers chicken move as well. So just tries to go going up, like protecting this upper territory. Maybe I could have tried to make some base or try to fight uh, in this area. I'm not sure. Yeah, again, I, this is the worst game uh, out of four, just to give an idea like the difference. But again, uh, last couple of days I had a real breakthrough in both practical playing strength and understanding of the game. And I will emphasize this uh, transformation a bit later. I just want to show you the games first. Uh, so here, and yeah, seemingly uh, like, yeah. So, th so th th this is the first, uh, uh, the first, I would say successful fight. So here I was thinking about the moves I was kind of reading. So uh, all these moves are sente, also known as forcing moves. So I'm making forcing move, I tear in this stone. And then I have this uh, being captured into the ladder. So here, and even even if this stone wasn't here, still this, this move would be relevant because uh, white, uh, because black would go into the ladder and run to one stone eventually. So even without this stone, uh, this just ladder for whites. And eventually, you see, like, uh, I've managed to slightly reduce uh, this space. So all these points on no ones now. So uh, I've slightly reduced the space. Now, next thing I do, I just take a big spot. Okay. Um, I don't know why did I play this top point. Uh, as far as, yeah, since recently I'm playing uh, Chinese opening, I should have probably played, played here. Yeah, but for some unknown reason, I decided to play this star point. I know now I'm looking at this position. I will probably play this uh, this move here. I know. But anyway, um, so uh, another trick that I've learned. So uh, if you have this invasion, if I play here, then uh, like in a Terry, a Terry, and j just to show you. So if I respond like this, then this is what Black can do or even better from this side, I believe. And if white defends like this, if white captures, then uh, this is going to be split and split, and th that's not good. So black gets lots of opportunities here. And alternatively, if white does not capture, uh, if white just do what? If white just protects like, oh, now it's black turn, okay. Uh, here, here. So if white doesn't capture, then what? Then it doesn't have pretty much anything here. So still, this is like, and like this. But you see, like the territory has gone, and lots of nasty things uh, is happening now. So here, here, and this is all. Uh, this all becomes dead. So this is not a good continuation. So some something I've learned from. Bad Exacto YouTube channel. Uh, I really like Pacquiao uh, teaching videos. So this move, and there are many like, complicated variations, but generally the shoulder hit uh, does uh, this sort of a thing. So you just protect things, and then when opponent uh, honeys, you can play like this. Uh, well, here, um, this might not be like the best ever continuation. And still, like, it's like uh, black does manage to split, but anyway, this is not as horrible now because uh, yeah, black also has lots of issues, so he needs to spend more time while white can uh, make it. Uh, I even sacrificed this three stones, and that's that's essentially fine. 
because uh, this influence that I've built, I've uh, I got this corner. I'm building some influence, and I'm now looking to even more territory, which is which is good. So after this move, uh, it's really hard for Black to go in here. Obviously, like uh, invasion points might be here, and still it's possible to build a group here, but it's much harder than before, than as if like the previous variation. Okay, so Black uh, tries to make a base, and he, he doesn't dare to go here. But again, I think uh, now, well, probably not now, not anymore, but maybe, yeah. If if, if Chachikun was playing black, definitely he would he, he would have created great living group here. But he's not Chachikun, so that's good for me. So he's, he's building a base, and again, uh, while he is trying to survive with his group, I'm naturally building my territory uh, on bottom. And also, not only having this uh, like corner and the side and corner here. I also have some influence uh, on the right, which uh, has been built earlier. And although this group is almost alive, so if one white stone was here, then and and here, yeah, then this group is alive. But anyway, this now serves as, as an influence, so I can grab center and I control the center now. So black, essentially, what black now has, well, black now has this, which is quite big. But again, so I would say that this is equal to this, maybe, and this is equal to this. So uh, I was uh, evaluating this position as around equal. Let's have a look at the score estimation here. Uh, it says widest plus 2.5, but yeah, essentially, uh, I would say this is around equal. So at this moment of the game, I was absolutely happy because um, black doesn't have any advantage out of the opening. Okay, so black uh, moves in a shape, so he has two eyes already, so this group is, is, is alive. Now it's trying to reduce me, and it tries to split my two groups, not allowing me to build something in, in the center. But uh, I don't care, so I, I know that I can uh, connect the groups anyway, and I just, if I don't have m some sort of a moyo in the center anyway, I will be able to not allow uh, black to make some territory here. So I just need to keep uh, balance. So I just don't want black to make more territory. So yeah, uh, one day black can make territory here, but I can make territory here. So I just try to keep things uh, uh, even and balanced here. And after this move, so I realized that you would be trying to like build the wall for some unknown reason. But again, this only strengthens white. So after this sequence, you see, like, uh, now naturally white has grown this fantastic moyo. And I don't see pretty much any sense in this move. Well, probably he, he, this, this leads to reducing these 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, like this, uh, 2 multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this 10 points get reduced. Is, the, is it worth it? Uh, because influence in the center and generally control all over the board is, is growing here. So I don't think this is, this was a reason, reasonable continuation. Well, anyway, so um, I'm approaching the corner. So I want this to be my territory. Okay. And eventually uh, I'm getting what I want. Well, not really. It's still some uh, invasion points or reduction points in here. But uh, anyway, so black, well, I, I didn't quite understand what he tried to do with this moose. It only helped me to naturally build my Moyo even more. And again, I, I don't consider myself to be like a cosmic style player. Uh, I really feel like a territorial guy. Yeah, but for some unknown reason, sometimes like uh, it just happens that big moyos are occurring during the game. I'm not sure how exactly that happens, but here it's just the matter of opponent uh, building this moyo instead of me. So it's not me uh, building this this moyo. It's it's like my opponent did this. Okay, and this card is. It doesn't make sense, most respect, because so many white stones here, so this should not be possible. However, uh, he goes for this, and 
this results in the fact that all this group is going to die and after this move so did he uh, let's say let's say here uh, did he have a chance well actually not really uh, maybe before so yeah it's like after this move already even this move yeah it's just hopeless it, you cannot do pretty much anything here so this was doing because he, he tried to break into my moyo but yeah so i i was always saying and still saying probably would always be saying that i'm bad in, at fighting but again if you have this fantastic advantage and if you have big influence from two sides and opponents running into your moyo this results in uh, the fact that you easily kill his group. So this is what's happening. And here again, he helps me to build my Moyo naturally. So, well, obviously I'm not going to be able to build the wall in here. But anyway, so this is a live group already. So I'm absolutely satisfied. Because again, so I have this and he has, he has this. Okay, so well, may maybe this is a little bit bigger than this. But then I have all this, and definitely this is bigger than this. And here, doesn't matter. And also I have this. So I feel like uh, I'm better here. So let's estimate the score. White plus 8.5, so just increases. Okay, then um, he, manages, he managed to split here. Uh, so this is no longer my territory. Uh, could I do something with it? Uh, well, I don't know, but yeah, let's have a look. So now that should be less. Oh, still plus 11.5, it's even more. It's not clear why, but yeah, how it calculates. But here, uh, I will make the 3-3 three, three invasion that I've been, uh, studying from Badzuk Doxa. And although this is not exactly the position, but still, um, I guess this is called RG, even if, if I'm not mistaken. So I really like using it. And here, uh, after this move, so I played here trying to emphasize that I want to grab this Moyo, uh, but this costed me uh, losing some local fight here. And But again, according to Engine, I just want to start punch, you know. Uh, the idea here is um, white move. Yeah, I played uh, 52%. Uh, oh, this is black to move. Okay, let's see what where black goes. Yeah, black black actually goes here. Uh, so yeah, this was the move I played. Or was it? No, uh, this was the move I played. Okay, so what engine engine suggests? Yeah, it's it's actually winning. Yeah, so in, intuitively, I, I made a better move. So again, I'm sacrificing stones like, uh, in uh, in Kyoto. Of 1p from Korea uh, from the Go Inside uh, YouTube channel. She says that uh, stones are not your kids. You don't you don't have to get used to them. Uh, so they're not your kids, right? So you can sacrifice them quite quite easily, quite nicely. And I I made lots of sacrifices. So two stones here, three stones here, and another two stones here. And again, this is the sign of uh, a higher level player so when you don't stick to stones that much really so you can sacrifice them although yeah if it thinks longer it, it treats this to be maybe slightly worth but anyway so this move is acceptable by the engine so well probably uh probably i should instead of this move i could have just trying to save this group and trying to make some territory here but then black would do some disaster in here so it's arguable what would be what would have been better to to do Anyway, um, so let's keep going with the game. Uh, so I sacrificed another two stones, but now this gives me an option of uh, essentially taking this Moyo as well. So I lost only two points here, but how many points I got in here? So this is like quite nice. Okay, and yeah, so this 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 is all my territory now, which is which is ama amazing. And let's have a look at the estimation again. So now white is plus 18, believe it or not. So white is now much, much better. And if I didn't do some chicken moves <laughs> later in the game, uh, I could win easily. I, I won anyway because he resigned. But uh, yeah, technically I was 1.5 uh, 
a point behind. But the potential of the position turned out to be quite fantastic at this point, okay? So uh, what happened then? So we just play a few more moves. So yeah, unprotect this card because uh, why did I do this? Because if he goes here, uh, then I may lose this group. So I was afraid. So like shape move, uh, making making sure I'm having two eyes, okay? And also, yeah, this card, I, I, I knew that this this is going to happen because uh, so this two stones might get into trouble. So I forgot, I, I was afraid to lose all of this. So I was probably playing uh, a bit too slow. And here again, this move is probably not necessarily needed, but just for safety reasons, I play it. And this costed me this move, okay? And again, I could just play here because uh, this stones could not be captured. So let me just... Uh, turn the engine again here, so start. So after this move, I could just go here, and I guess that's it. So let's have a look. Yeah, something is wrong with the engine. So let's run it again. All right. I just didn't load yet. So I, I didn't have to play here, yeah. So engine gives like this move or this move. So I can just play here and that's it. Uh, well, actually, yeah, this, you, you saw these RGs were not really that um, pleasing. Uh, oh, no, no, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I don't want to play this move. So maybe instead, uh, maybe instead of here. Yeah, so may, maybe it just should have played here, more safe way of playing. And yeah, in that case, uh, I would be doing fantastically well. But unfortunately, I didn't do that. And yeah, unfortunately, a uh, sequence of chicken moves has been played. Uh, okay, I just want to remove this node. A sequence of chicken moves has been played. So again, I'm playing here because I was afraid to get like surrounded. So I'm losing a few points here, which is not good. And I'm giving Sante to my opponent, so he's forcing me to defend. And this move, that's not a big deal, really, but just takes it takes points. Um, it takes points. Uh, yeah, this is probably just a blunder. Yeah, this is probably just a blunder. But anyway, so now... Uh, uh, he wants to capture me, but I'm one step ahead in, so I'm winning the capturing race here. So what what has happened here? So he's trying to capture me. Yeah, but I'm just faster than him. And at this point, um, let's have a look at the estimation. At this point, uh, yeah, black plus 7.5, so it seems like black is much better now, but... It's not the game over yet. And after a few more moves, turns out that, yeah, after this move, for some unknown reason, for some mysterious reason, he resigned. But uh, if we estimate here, we have black only plus 1.5. But again, just because of this chicken moves here, um, which I just, if I spend more time thinking about this move, so I, I would have realized that nothing horrible is going to happen there. Yeah, but chicken, chicken moves, that's the reason. But anyway, you, you saw the potential of the position. And again, this is the worst game so far. So let's go to the next one. The next one I played versus uh, a guy on OGS, and it's mentioned as the 17th Q, but it's very underrated because uh, he has wins uh, against 9Q, 8Q. So he is around, he's a sin single digit Q player, and he is like, um, well, I think I, I, I would have considered him to be about equal to me in strength by the time I was playing the game. But in this game, I've uh, this was the very first game in my life where. I've managed to outplay my opponent in terms of capturing big group of stones. And this happened naturally, not due to fighting, but due to probably better understanding of position, better timings. So let me show you. Now I'm playing black. 
And uh, I'm playing the, although board seems to be a little bit rotated because you didn't play here traditionally or here, so just place on the bottom. But anyway, here I already I play my favorite Chinese opening, so this is called Low Chinese. Um, I'm studying this opening now, uh, still so many variations to study, but anyway. And he plays this kind of move. So um, I didn't see, I like, I didn't know at the time. <laughs> now I don't know either, <laughs> to be very honest, what to do here. But I thought, what if I just try to play uh, the regular Joseki I know, and I approach uh, the knight's move to the corner. And yeah, I thought that anyway, I need to break this uh, territory because so far, so this is like nothing really. Also, this is this might be nothing if I invade 3-3 three, three here or here. But this potentially may uh, turn into white's territory. So I want to avoid that at any cost. So I invade here. Because uh, if there, there wasn't this turn, this would be uh, considered as approaching. And even there are some variations where you play the move here. And if white paints us, usually black goes to 3-3. Three, three. Um, maybe just to show you the variation... So if instead of this move, if say I play here, black pincers, then, well, with this pincer, it probably doesn't make sense, but uh, this like variation may happen. This is the standard Josaki. Okay, uh, and uh, white needs to block, and black can either go here or here. So this is the standard Josaki, but uh, this is not what happened in the game. So since, uh, okay, uh, I'll play it here. So since uh, he played this move, uh, I thought that, yeah, it's not a big deal. And he responds, uh, he responds with this uh, corner enclosure, sort of. Usually they play, uh, knight's move should be played uh, or one space extension. So that's the standard Joseki. This feels like a little bit too far. But yeah, I don't know how to punish it, and I don't know these fancy variations with attaching and things like that. So I just play the standard Joseki, so this formation. And suddenly, uh, I take all of the white territory here, and, I'm, and absolutely, I am absolutely satisfied at this point. At this point. He approaches the knight move, and I just play, uh, play the Joseki move here. He drops back, uh, and I'm... Uh, creating the potential to run towards the center. Meanwhile, uh, creating a living group on the site, which is not that small, by the way, so which is also cool. Now he's trying to surround me, uh, which is a little bit annoying, maybe, but um, I don't know, for some reason it doesn't feel good, because I think, like, yeah, uh, this, this move was interesting. So after he played this move, I thought, like, okay, so this, this guy uh, knows something. He knows how to attack. So at this point, I thought that, okay, maybe I I might have to ice in the corner. I'm, I may not have to ice in the corner, but anyway, I need to think about uh, running towards the center. And I'm playing this shape move, uh, so white attacks. And now I'm just trying to uh, make use of the available space. So I play this attachment, and... Then, uh, yeah, I probably, I, sh I know, probably after this move, I could have uh, played here instantly. But I thought that, yeah, maybe, well, maybe attacking this group would be more, like, done level thinking stuff. But, yeah, I, I just considered a simpler approach. I just wanted to create more space f for myself. So, it really, so if even only one eye here, then I have another little eye here. So, that's the reason why I play this move. And then I spotted suddenly, after he responded, I suddenly spotted that, yeah, okay, I have this move as well. So I played that move as well. And now I'm absolutely live in the corner. And now even if I don't have an access to the center, uh, this is still fine. But uh, interesting thing is going to happen now. I'm going to capture this stones, believe it or not. And this is a really fun thing. So like White is now trying to maybe build some group here and try to connect with this group and try to uh, create influence uh, in the center, and that would be quite nice. But I play this move because my idea is to, round, is to surround this group to make it weak, and white is trying to do something. But again, I think this move is... I don't know if this move is right or wrong. 
probably, I don't know, probably this move was a mistake. Probably he should have played uh, the shape move in here. Let's let's ask the engine. I think uh, after this move, White should play here uh, to make a nice shape and to create the potential to uh, be able to run towards the center. So uh, let's ask the engine here. Uh, come on. Analyzer. Yeah, I think this is going to be the move for White. Yeah, this is this is uh, this shoulder hit is also good. It, it helps developing. Yeah, you see, like th this is really cool because it helps developing quite a, a nice group here. Okay, so, still might be some issues, but anyway, yeah, forty five. It's it's not that great. It's not that great, but continuation like this, uh, a very list would uh, leave this group alive most likely. So yeah, this is the move that I suggested. But the move he made is not an engine move, definitely, you see. And after we play this move, I think this should be one of top engine responses. Yeah, 53%. So there is such a move. Yeah, there is such a move. So I hit the engine move here. And yeah, even in this case, uh, this black group seems to be totally dead. So this is something, uh, somewhat a point where I've realized that, well, okay, uh, I feel like I'm understanding the game at this very, very particular point and position and situation a little bit better than my opponent. And this gave me lots of motivation. And I was happy at this point by playing this move. And after he plays, well, essentially, I don't really see the way of what he could have done. Maybe he could have played here. Um, let's ask the engine again. So this, this is quite a key moment. Uh, this is quite a key moment here. So what could he do? Okay, he said as analyzer. So what could he do? Probably attaching. Yeah, attaching is good. So also also going from this side. Yeah, also good. All right. So the, here here he could yeah he could try to capture these stones. He could play like this. And yeah, he, actually he played this way. Yeah, he could have saved his group, and I would not be able to capture him. So yeah, he played probably the, the worst move ever in the positions he played this move. He thought that he can escape, but yeah, already this gives, like, this is a winning for black, you see? So because it's, it's no longer possible to save this kind of group. And I was absolutely happy at this point. So um, here, uh, I don't want him to create uh, any shape move. To make any shape move to create space, although this still leaves the elephant's eye uh, open here. And again, probably this is not the most accurate sequence. The the, the more accurate sequence you've just seen uh, with the engine. And when he takes a big plays here, uh, this is so weird because yeah, he, he probably could have just make use of this elephant's eye, and it very least trying to escape and trying to run. Probably this would would have costed him uh, losing lots of territory because this would help me naturally build in this area and maybe even this area. So it's hard to see. So he decides to take another big place. So another candidate to uh, invade here and make some mess. But before that, after this move, I've realized that all this territory is now officially mine. So this group is dead because it doesn't have any option to live. No, no space to make Probably even one eye, not even talking about two eyes. Okay, so uh, I'm not quite sure sure about this move, uh, what it does. Yeah, probably he is looking to create this huge moyo in the center. Maybe, maybe. Um, so my response is just to went like this. So here I'm making like, uh, I'm attacking and just capture and yeah so it seems like he is building his moyo even more and yeah let's ask what does the engine think about this position so if we go for analysis so how much yeah still still black is winning you see like 56 so it's black is winning and if we have a look uh, my move is, is not really to be good though, but anyway. Uh, and if we have a look at the estimation, so yeah, white plus 11 goes into estimation, but there are too many. If, if white could just 
do something out of this then yeah but not really so uh, I decided just to approach and if he pinces me then I would be uh, running uh, towards the center and then trying to connect with this group meanwhile attacking this group and by the way by the time I would be attacking this group maybe this is a little bit too ambitious but again this is the level of thinking that I could not allow myself to have earlier uh, because when I was not considering attacking at all I was I was just trying to play peaceful go I was surrounded all the way all the way long and losing every single game so yeah, unfortunately, like being passive results in uh, turning into food and opponent just eats you alive. That's not good. So I thought that maybe I could surround. This might be a naive thought, but anyway, so Pinsa probably would be the best uh, response here trying to attack this group, this because this is weak. But again, if he pinces, uh, so running, uh, maybe trying to make some. Uh, noise uh, in the bottom trying to make a living group somehow so anyway I, I don't really want to uh, to have this space to turn into white territory and also I'm trying to split uh, so this big Moya try to split this apart but opponent responses with very uh, poor response I believe so this gives me uh, more motivation to like start approaching the corner so I feel like uh, it's not a base, and he initially, eventually, does invade here. But again, I'm using the, uh, this Baudic Ductus uh, trick to cover from above. And I really like this technique uh, because it's simple and I can understand it. So here, I sacrifice. Uh, I, I don't remember how this would go in the game, but. At this point, this might be treated as I play the move, then the pincer is played, and then I just go for a standard Joseki here. Okay? So if he played here instead, if he played here, I would have go, gone for the standard Joseki like this. Uh, I've been showing you this uh, Joseki already, and maybe white goes like this, and black goes here. That's sort of okay. So now this group is in danger, and if uh, white is like trying to or well, probably this is not going to be that good. I, I think this is much better for white now. Uh, for for oh, still still gives more skill for black for some reason. I don't know, but as this is this probably can be attacked by by white. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. But I thought that the game would go something like this. That that's how I would have continued if I was white. I would be trying to isolate black and trying to uh, attack this group of very least. Uh, make its life much harder as hard as possible. But um, he plays this very strange move. No, don't re remove the note. So again, he's like very, he's too greedy. He's trying to get too much. But this allows me to save, even to, even to save this stone. All right. So I easily live in the corner. Uh, I shoulder hit this, this guy. So this is no longer going to be big space here and again so he is like uh, looking uh, towards his moyo and probably he's still dreaming to kill this this group it's hard to say I'm not sure I don't know so a few more a few more moves and eventually I have another corner being uh, taking okay and here uh, I ignore this uh, because that's not that big. So uh, although this group is dead, but by the time of playing the game, I wasn't really that sure. So I want to make sure that no nasty RGs are happening there. So I need to make sure that if if something goes wrong, if say this group, so this group, uh, the idea is that this group, if, if this group is not taken, this group might be captured. And it doesn't have that many liberties, only one, two, three, four. If this is captured, well, five six, seven, eight, and that's not much. Uh, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one less. But anyway, yeah, I, I was uh, I was concerned at this point. So I started taking away his liberties here and even taking this. So I, I, I spent time. I probably could have could be more effective on this part. But yeah, I just want to make sure that this dies for sure and this group is not going to get captured and also even if something goes wrong 
even if something goes wrong, uh, like uh, I wasn't sure if he, like if he plays here, for instance, I play here, so uh, I cannot connect to my groups. I want to make sure that even if for some mysterious reason I won't be able to capture this, things happen. Yeah, that at very least I would be able to connect to my group, to my friends, to my groups here, and that would be good enough. So that was the idea, and here, yeah, it just gives me uh, even more territory. And here, uh, the final part comes. So it seems like he should have like been able to take uh, to, to capture this group. And if we have a look at the estimation at this point, uh, black plus uh, fifteen. Yeah, but if white takes all this, maybe white would be better, actually. So, yeah. Uh, but I do the following. So, well, this this move this move is very strange. I think, I think he should have tried to somehow, yeah, again, take the elephant's eye, maybe. Uh, let's uh, ask the engine what kind of variation could be available in here. So after this move... Yeah, still it's like losing for white, but this could be the variation. Uh, probably this would die. Probably this would die. Yeah, like this. Like this. But yeah, in this case, uh, black is capable of uh, reducing this Moyu significance. So anyway, uh, black breaks through, no matter if this group lives or if it dies. Okay, so I detach here. Uh, but black decide, uh, but white decides simply to have at least something and try to secure this territory. But this allows me to connect, and after uh, I'm not just making this group alive, but I'm even uh, making some space there, and even more. Okay, so I'm reducing quite nicely. Okay. All right. So eventually, yeah, I managed to create quite a huge chunk of territory where it shouldn't be mine, absolutely. And yeah, so some fighting tactics is is coming. So I play here, and the proper response would be to cover in here to avoid avoid the double attack. In this case, I can go further on and. White and black, uh, yeah, white should reduce somehow like this, and maybe I don't know, like some possible variation, maybe taking this. Uh, oh, it's not that it's black's turn. Uh, yeah, maybe like this. No, well, forget this anyway. So, but what happened in the game? Uh, so at this point, so I'm looking for uh, this double Atari, but he plays here. And I have this double Atari nicely. So he takes one stone, but I take another stone. And look, now I am capable of taking even more, taking much more, and I'm and another Atari. So opponent gives me lots of what is known as free stuff. Okay, so I just defend comely here. I defend here comely. And he connects. Okay, okay. And these three stones would be captured, probably due to the blunder, but uh, my evil plan is to play here, but not now, because now he would see that I'm attacking, but someday later, when he wouldn't <laughs> notice, and this this worked eventually, which was really fun. So uh, we are entering the end game phase here, uh, so probably another chicken move to play here, uh, given, given him some territory points, but... Anyway, anyway, uh, we just finishing our uh, conversation, let's say. So, final moves, and yeah. So here, here is here is here is the, the time. <laughs> so he, he, you probably just should play here. And I just take this stone, and he goes here, and I play here, and yeah. So this is how this should happen. But he probably he just blunders. So if for some unknown reason he defends this one stone, which allows me to take, he takes back. I play here, and this is the position. 
And now I just want to make sure that, well, this group is dead anyway, but I just don't want to pass yet. So I just keep playing. I keep playing and I kill this group. Okay. And pass, pass, and we are done. And let's have a look at the final score. So the final score is black plus 37.5, which is a crushing week. So usually I'm losing like 37, 40 points, 50, 60 points. Uh, I'm losing a lot. And one of the key uh, things is to, you know, uh, not afraid to lose. But yeah, I, I would just summarize everything when the last game would finish. So let's go to the, to the next game. Um, the next game is played versus the GNU Go, which is uh, around 6th Q uh, computer Go playing program. I'm playing Black versus GNU Go. And the game is, in some respect, it's very similar to the previous game. And you will notice that, well, I would say, well, probably GNU Go is playing a bit better than... Uh, my, my opponent, but the score is also very crushing. So let's quickly walk through the game. So I play my favorite Chinese uh, Fusaki. I'm not, about, not sure about this mode. So this is not available in the pro games database, very least the one that I've been uh, inspecting. So after this move, I was sort of out of the opening book. So I didn't really know what to do. And I decided just to, I don't know, secure some territory here. And, uh, well, this approach, uh, probably this is just from the wrong side, and this is treated to be ugly. Um, usually, white should approach from this side. But anyway, uh, we play the standard Joseki here. This move is a little bit strange, so the Joseki move would be to play here. And this makes perfect sense. You make a base for yourself, you shoulder hit the stone, so... Uh, it's forced to respond to it somehow and generally, you know, so this move is a bit strange to me. But anyway, I just want to, I want to play as simple as possible. I want to secure the corner. And after this move, well, still 3-3 three, three is, is possible here. But, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see what happened. So opponent makes a uh, two, spa two space jump and I approach the corner. So if he uh, tries to... Yeah, again, so this is probably not the best type of move. So, again, if I play it here and he played here to pincer me, I can either go out or invade the 3-3. Three, three. But, yeah, I do dare to go this approach. Maybe this is wrong. So here uh, we play the Joseki. Okay. Uh, well, this is not exactly, I believe... Uh, no, it's, it's probably it's not Joseki. Yeah, so after this move... I'm not sure, to be honest. Yeah, probably here I should just... Uh, I could have just, yeah, uh, protect, but I didn't re really want to make uh, to let white play here because this would grow the influence and uh, towards the sense. I didn't really want that to happen. So I would rather sacrifice this tiny little stone, but I try to build towards the center from this side. So here I have some space in the corner. Here I have some space on the side and on the corner, although it might be invaded later. So from this side, I need something that would be uh, pointing towards the center and later trying to either make a living group here or try to connect to my friends. Okay. So this is the balance of having territory on one side and having influence on another. Now, next, this move, uh, again, Mm, I thought that on the one hand I can go here and here, so trying to reduce this corner as much as possible. On the other hand, trying to make a base established on this side. On the third hand, trying simply to split this group and this group. And also, again, if this guy needs some help, I can just uh, approach from this side. Okay, so that was the idea. But this move, uh, I probably didn't... Uh, I probably should push one more time. So probably if I pushed one more time and then played something like this, maybe this was a little bit better because in this position, this group is not in that big danger as uh, it was in the game. But anyway, um, anyway, I played I played this move and Y plays here. And I thought that, you know what, maybe if probably after Black plays here, uh, it's really hard to save this group or even 
if black plays here, for instance, follow with playing here. So this after this move, this group is probably dead. And I thought that, yeah, maybe, maybe I just did something horribly wrong. So just forget about those stones. So it's really important to admit your mistake if you make one, if you consider that to be a mistake. But on the other hand, if this is not killed instantly, this might help uh, in the future. And surprisingly, this is exactly what has happened later during the game. For now, I just approach the corner. And uh, yeah, here we are playing the Joseki, but this is not the best to have a continuation because it allows uh, this ladder. And since I have black stones here, I've seen that before playing. Uh, so I know that there's a favors black. Okay, so this this is definitely to my favor. And next move, I just want to make sure. So here I was quite satisfied about what I had. So I had some territory here, and well, still three three is probably invadable. Yeah, it is invadable still, uh, although it may not be that great idea. But maybe after this move, this is not possible. I'm not sure. But I said I thought like if I have this and I uh, and if I make sure that I have this, uh, then I have maybe this dies, but I would definitely have this living group. Then where is where is White's territory? Well here, and if he is lucky, then maybe here, and that's it. So I thought that this is good enough for me. Let's have a look at this score estimation, by the way. So Black was thirty two, yeah. So I thought this is just fine. So I just want to make sure that this territory is hundred percent mine. And um, this move, uh, I just want to destroy uh, the lower side. I'm a big fan of Chochikun, so it's not a big surprise that I'm playing moves to dis destroy opponent's territory up front, like before he tries something. Okay, so, well, this seems to be natural because he's building the base, but probably too slow. He probably should have tried to attack this stone to at very least reduce the amount of damage that this stone can be done. Say, White could have played here, for instance. But if since he didn't, I'm um, just making this uh, large knight moves, and on this side, it's all simultaneously two space jump. And now I'm significantly reducing, and like uh, attaching here, here, or here, or here, or here, or maybe here. I don't know those variations, but still, I, I felt like confident enough to handle things. All right, so now again, uh, this like move. Well, this is this may be okay, but uh, why didn't play here? Because this move, well, he wants to do something, make some noise in the center. But yeah, uh, if this turns, if this moyo, it's not even moyo yet. If it turns into a moyo and then it turns into a, you know, um, some real territory points, then great. But if not. This is essentially nothing. So if a very least he has the stone played here first, so to make sure that all this is his, then yes, but without the stone being placed somewhere in here, or the very least in here, this move doesn't really make that big sense to me. So I'm just making my base uh, even stronger. So well, this move, he takes this little place well that's not that big but at very least this move makes more sense because now this uh, guys are more likely to be captured but again if he played here instead so you just see if he just plays here then this group i think it's it's just dead uh, let's see if patcher would ever try to save it i'm not sure but let's have a quick look if the engine would be trying to... He actually tries to save, yeah. So he tries to save. But I don't see uh, if it's possible to make two eyes, to be very honest. Like this. Uh, one eye on... One eye here, maybe, if lucky. Uh, but not much, really. So, yeah. Um, this would be much stronger. And, and, and eventually, yeah. You see, like, uh, after this move, White is actually winning. You see, like, only 44%, even 31 So it's not that much. So essentially, after this move, uh, White would win. But he didn't spot that move. So, yeah. Um, on the other hand, when I play... Uh, well, well, yeah, so he plays here. And now when I play here, by the way, is this... What does Engine... Thinking about my move, I think this should be. I oh, still engine thinks I'm <gasps> sorry. Still engine thinks I'm worse. Yeah, there is. There was the move. 
Uh, and yeah, the continuation was really a lookalike. So um, here we go. And now you see like I am capable of escaping. And now something very dramatic and interesting is going to happen to this stone. And you already guessed properly if you did that I'm going to kill this stones, believe it or not. So um, this is, again, this is some sort of a skill that wasn't available to me earlier. So I will say if it was by the end of this video, I'm like how did I manage to achieve this sort of a skill? So I'm making this bamboo connection here. Uh, and essentially, I'm attacking this group, okay? Still, uh, it may go out, and I was sure it would go out. However, after, like, this move is very strange, you know, just play here, and that's it. So at this point, I would not be thinking about trying to make two eyes here. I would be thinking about running away because it already spoils, uh, demolishes the territory if white would ever dare to try to make some territory here. So this group is having trouble, troubles with living. So if it's not capturing anything, then it needs a whole lot of moves to be spent to go somewhere to, 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 to live. So this move is very, very weird and strange. So he should have played here, I believe. Since he didn't, I play there. Okay, now again, uh, trying to kill three stones. Um, I probably could not even react to this, but, but I did. Uh, so now I have another chunk, another piece of territory, another chunk of territory, uh, being like most likely mine. Okay. And eating even more. Okay. Now this is an attempt to one day connect with my friends, but again, uh, so he tries to split me here, which doesn't seem to be the right thing. Although maybe he was afraid that this this thing would die. Yeah, in that regards, probably this move makes sense. But you see, like what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to split this this group from this group. Okay, so he doesn't allow me to go into his territory, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, so I'm going even uh, like trying to destroy even more. Then uh, I guess it's called Pip. Uh, so trying to connect here to, again, just eat these three stones. But again, it would be better for him just to give me these three stones and then spend time uh, to run away. And already he has some points here, which is good. But he didn't do this. He did some weird, strange move. Now, the next thing I do, I, I'm trying to make it impossible for him to run away now. Okay. And he does this sort of a strange thing. I'm not sure why he does that. And then uh, this allows me to cut this stone. And I cut this stone. And after a few moves, well, this, this attempt to live uh, is very natural, but no. Okay, and here, uh, this the next move is the one I'm really proud of. So a true killer move. So it's going here. So. Yes, if he plays, this is the vital point. If he plays here, then he, well, probably even without this move, he cannot, does not have enough space to make two eyes. To make two eyes, I need the stone here, here, and here. But that's too long. Black would never allow that to happen. So anyway, I was extremely proud of this move. And again, here, his response is awful. So this lets me cut him out completely so i think i'm not sure if that would work but if he played something like this and then say black goes like this and here and black is trying to force him then well somehow i think maybe he could have tried to attack this group now white now black needs to spend time here here maybe here here and maybe like this so this, this should be alive. This should join his friends one day. But he didn't do that. And instead, what he did was um, was this. This very, very weird move. Okay, he tries still to do something, but now it's too late. So I just want to make sure that he never goes out. Uh, he's trying to connect this to stone to his group, but that does, doesn't make any sense at all. All right. 
Uh, I'm proud of this shape move. <laughs> yeah, I really like shapes. Um, again, making use of elephant sign here. All right, so just establishing more territory. Okay, and yeah, here uh, I was thinking that maybe I don't have enough time to kill this, so maybe my group can die before I'm capable of killing this group. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, have some uh, that I can be safe. So I'm making eye shape here, another potential eye shape here. Okay. Meanwhile, taking territory, of course. Okay. Uh, so this moves just to avoid this group to be captured. Okay. And then again, using Sente here, threatening to take this to stones and just taking away his, his space. Okay. As much as I can. And all right. And taking away everything possible. And just some chicken moves at the end. But probably this is not this is not a chicken move because otherwise it can capture this entire thing. So probably that was necessarily needed. Okay. Um, all right. And yeah. And we are almost there. And yes. And here Jin Yugo passes and I pass. And this group is entirely dead now. And if we have a look at the final score, we have black plus 43. So this is even more crushing as opposed to the previous game. But guys, I think that uh, you may find some similarities between this game and the previous one. And as for timing, I, early I played this game and the previous game was played later as opposed to this one. So I've been training uh, some principles let's say with with the computer that's one of the ways of how i practice I play with gene you go to try something new so I learn some new technique or some new principles i want to uh get hands dirty to practice uh, a little bit I, I need to i want to be able to take moves back to try out some variations and you will not do this when you're playing with a human player right but when you're playing versus an engine then this works perfectly well so again uh capturing the group in the top of the board, just like in the previous game. Although the position is a little bit different, but still, the result is even more crushing. So in the previous game, I had 37.5, I guess, and here I have 43.5, which is even more. Okay, great. Let's go to the very last game for today. And uh, this time, I'm playing black again. But this time, opponent uh, has much bigger rating. It's about it's 1,213. Uh, at play okay and usually those like uh done level players believe it or not but yeah probably there was some unfair uh, gaining of the rating because uh the strength of this guy is well his rating is quite high i, I never won uh, against uh, people with such a high rate and i never i could never win a guy with 1100s at play okay not, not even thinking about 1200. So when I was playing him, I was like uh, preparing myself to lose, uh, starting from the very first games. But then suddenly I've realized that I don't really need to care much about his race and I just need to care about the stones that he places on board and where exactly. So let's have a look. This game is also very interesting. So uh, traditionally I'm playing the Chinese Fusaki. And this time, uh, this approach is quite classical. So uh, this has been appearing in pro games many times. And this, well, I would call this Kobayashi-like move because uh, if black, instead of playing a Chinese Fusaki, plays here, black goes here, black, and black plays here, this is, this is known as the Kobayashi um, Fusaki. Uh, so here uh, is the invasion point for later, and I will make use of it. So at this point, I was really concerned about how the game goes because I felt like, okay, um, it feels like he's really he really knows what he's, he's doing. So like knows opening theory. This Kasumi made me, you know, uh, respect him even more because what he wants to play. 
uh, he wants to play big plays and try to grab a whole lot of territory if possible. Um, I didn't know exactly what to respond here, so I just calmly played two space jump in Ichan hostile. Uh, just try to play simple, try to make some territory. And after this move, the next thing I play was uh, this invasion. I'm not sure really, uh, is this a good move, to be honest? Let's have a look. Uh, let's start the engine and see. Is this actually possible to play that way? Or well, probably that was a bad idea. Probably that was a bad idea. So, and by the way, yeah, uh, according to Anjan, black is worse now. Uh, no, black is not worse. It's about equal if black, if black say invades from from here. But again, I thought that like, what is the biggest place uh, where he can make territory? The most potential is in here. So I really wanted to, since I'm now practicing invasion, I really wanted to do something. Well, even even the center is is possible to play here interesting you know so yeah this was the biggest point uh, or even here was possible i'm not sure if this technically can, can be called a reduction though but anyway i played i played here which is probably probably weird so yeah this already oh not really not that fast hold on a sec not that fast this is not really much Better for white still, although probably slightly better for white. If say white plays here, then black would have trouble surviving. But it's possible to survive, I believe. Yeah, I believe this is possible to survive. See, like what a fantastic variation engine uh, uh, gives us. So I think this move definitely deserves uh, to exist. And his response at this point uh, actually surprised me. So he just wants to uh, secure the corner. And which means he's not that aggressive, he's not trying to kill me instantly. And he just asks me, like, okay, you want to try to live in my territory, then go ahead and try it. And I did, and I did try. So this uh so next move, he would cut my, my stone, and uh this stone is going to be dead most likely. But as I heard from professional players on YouTube and Baduk Doctor as well, there is a thing called take your stones lightly. And that's another way to say that stones are not your kids. You don't have to care much about them Like you, if you lose one. So uh, I just keep asking him, so, okay, what about me making a group here? What do you think about this? And another quite a strange move, you know? So I think he should have played the knight's move, and that would limit the scope. In that case, I would need to try to break to the center, and he would start, uh, like... Uh, surrounding me so at very at very most i could have a living group there here but at the cost of he builds a huge influence towards the center and assuming the current uh position that would probably be much better for him so i did realize that this wasn't really so <laughs> if i go at this point i realized that if i live here but he builds the influence and towards the center that this is not going to be that good for me even if i manage to survive uh on the site but anyway, um, this wasn't something that has happened. Uh, and uh, yeah, so again, here, probably it would be better just to try to play somewhere here, for instance. So invest in more to, to this influence. But he played this move. So again, um, now he says, okay, I want all this to be my territory. And uh, for me, this like... Uh, structure feels like uh, I don't really like it, so I would need to invade somewhere here later, which would happen uh, within the game quite dramatically. Uh, I bet you would enjoy that. So at this point, I thought, okay, so what is his potential? So his potential is this. And there is the rule, so if you want to reduce, you just find the, you just draw the image in your line here and split it in the center. That's the, exactly, that's the exact point uh, that I've taken. Okay, and instead he could have here, he could have played, I don't know, maybe playing the center is a bit too ambitious, but somewhere like in here, probably, because it's, well, running here, running here is about equal. So either from this side or from maybe from this side, maybe, maybe, he, maybe here was the best. Yeah, I think here what was the best. What's the engine thinking about this position? I'm really wondering. So probably, uh, yeah, 50. So it gives white an advantage, you see. 
it gives white an advantage. So what one is white going to do after this move or after this move or after this one? Is forced to run. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about continuation like this. So when he played, but because I didn't really know what to do, I, I at this point, I didn't, didn't ever think that I would manage to get right into this corner, believe it or not, and have quite a lot of space there. So this move has surprised me. Uh, the next move surprised me because my reduction was actually accepted. So he said, like, okay, I just take this. I don't care about the center. But uh, I keep pressing here. So I'm extremely proud of this shape. Uh, I've seen this shape earlier many times. I really like this shape. And you know, like, uh, when you cannot win against a stronger opponent, what are you trying to do? What I'm, I'm trying to do? I'm trying to... Uh, set some goals for the game and no matter the result I'm trying to uh, achieve those goals and one of the goals I'm having when I'm playing players which I think they are stronger than me like this guy is, was I, well, I was thinking he's like sort of a done player obviously he's not because if he was a done player I wouldn't be able to, to win against him because his moves are quite uh, Q-ish I would say uh, Q-like moves but yeah at this point I thought like okay I don't care about the result, but maybe I can just build the shape, and I was really happy. But then suddenly I've realized, hold on a sec, after building this shape, suddenly all this, oh my goodness, this looks like a big, huge moyo. And I consider myself to be territorial player. I'm not playing Cosmic Star, but for some unknown reason, it happens that I'm playing this, this huge thing here. Which is so strange. So I thought, like, okay, very, at very least, if I'm not capable of invading in here later on, then I can try to build something in here. Maybe I just have more points eventually. And again, this move seems very passive again. Then I want more. So I want to connect my weak group because I thought that maybe it's just uh, too ambitious to try to take all this. So maybe I just try to connect this weak group with this 100% uh, living group and that would be a good thing. He plays this move, which is so strange. He should have not allowed me doing this because just psychologically it gives me so much, so much confidence, right? So he, he plays here. Monkey jump would be possible. He didn't do the monkey jump. But even if he plays the monkey jump, uh, well, probably if he plays the monkey jump, then only one eye is here. But I then if I managed to connect, I would definitely uh, create another another right here. So I thought that this monkey jump is not a big deal. And I uh, happily connected. Okay. Even more. Now he cuts. So uh, sort of fighting starts here. And this, this is quite interesting. So here, uh, I was thinking like, okay, so maybe, maybe um, he still can uh, like make... Uh, some noise here and even if this group dies so at this point i thought maybe even if this group dies at very least i will build a huge influence towards the center and i would just grab more so that was my idea and after this move i thought oh thank goodness so uh yeah i can just uh yeah i can just be safe here all right and yeah so just he could make this monkey jump move here very annoying but it didn't do this for some unknown reason. Now uh, he just loads me even more. So uh, he essentially helps me to build the entire bottom territory. So after this move again, uh, I have Sente, so I can take a big place, try to reduce his corner. He plays here. So I could have tried to get this corner, but I think I thought it's not as big as trying to secure this entire uh, territory in the center. So uh, for sure, obviously I went here, and again, you see, like every his move simply helps me to build my own territory, and this is the principle uh, I've seen one day from a YouTube channel called Joseki Masters, from uh, American Chinese guy uh, who was like round five done uh, on Fox, uh, and he was introducing this pr principle quite a lot, and that the idea is during fighting. Um, it favors you if during fight an opponent uh, tries to run to live and you are making territory. So this moves for white. Well, what it did it bring to white? It just, well, white now has a living group, but black has also a living group and so much of territory here. 
All right. So at this point, um, at this point, look at my influence. Yeah, I'm not a dumb player, and I'm very bad at using influence. But I was sure at this point that at very least, uh, having this influence helps me to at very least live in the center, which was already good enough. And I was quite happy with this position. And if we have a look at the engine evaluation here, what engine thinks about the position. So uh, it only gives you a 38, 37% for white. So the engine thinks uh, black is much better here. Well, that's in many respects because engines uh, like influence more uh, in value influence more about the territory sometimes. And if we estimate the score, this is interesting. So yeah, also black plus 16.5. Yeah, uh, I thought it was way better You're according to this one, but no, okay. Anyway, so even according to the static evaluation, still uh, black seems to be having more territory. But again, this is very vague because uh, many invasion points like, uh, so it thinks all this is black territory. It's not essentially. So this most likely to be uh, to become black territory. It's not clear about this corner, absolutely. About this part, absolutely not. About this, absolutely not. So this is a little bit too ambitious, I would say. So I think that just from the pure bare statistical uh, evaluation, white has better chances because essentially what black has, black has this and white has this. So this is bigger. And black might have some, some small here, maybe something here. So statically, it seems like white just has more. But dynamically, black ha has more potential for sure. All right. So, well, this, uh, this move is, I think, uh, I don't know if it's okay, but I'm starting to attack instant instantly. All right. So again, uh, the same principle, guys. So he plays this move. He can potentially try to make a living group on the side, on the corner. But well, how I'm trying to make use of it, I'm trying to use it in order to keep building my Moyo absolutely for free. So he made this, it's not even a shape yet, well, almost like a shape, almost like an eye shape. But this helped me to put this four stones, like no, put this three stones, like absolutely almost for free. And this helps strengthen my potential even more this is really so cool and again so he helps me even more and i just protect the cut and now see like see like my my moyo is growing naturally and that's that's something that mm, the higher done player you are the more of this stuff uh, is happening uh, in your games and again i'm really far from being a done player at the moment I don't know if I would ever be one, but uh, understanding this principle and realizing that I do understand this better than my opponent, it's really satisfying feeling, you know? So eventually, again, so what he managed to do with, with this invasion, he managed to create a living group. He grabbed some territory points, but he helped me uh, so nicely to, to build this sort of a thing. Okay. Um, so now after this move, yeah, of course, I, I wasn't, I didn't think that I would be able just to grab all this. Of course not. I did realize that it would be trying to break through. I was totally fine about this. And at the very least, this, this horrible run should have been justified so that I just at least make some use. So I'm not uh, pissed off at him, absolutely. I just let him uh, break things here. And... Now things are going to be interesting. So I didn't manage to capture him at this point. Uh, yeah, and at this point, uh, yeah, let's turn the engine here. So the, the, the most interesting part of the game starts now. So at this point, I did realize that um, my Moyo gets re reduced significantly. And these are the engine uh, variations, okay? So I did consider this, um, this invasion that I've seen in Baduk Doctor videos on invasions in his series, but Baduk lectures essentially. So I thought that my only chance is maybe trying to grab these two stones. Uh, but my biggest dream was to invade in here. And according to Andrew, this was possible even directly like this. Yeah, but yeah, that's too complicated for me as a human player. And 
for a noob like me, that's that's really complicated. So I decided to go the way that I thought I know, and it turned out to be <laughs> very interesting. So I just invade here, all right? He ignores. This is very strange. So usually, uh, so bad continuation would be play like this because we have um, uh, this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we have this. And if he tries to, oh, I forgot the variation. Uh, if he tries to play here, yeah, here and here. So that's that. That's it. And he has. Th there are some cutting points here. So for instance, like here and here, and this is that. Okay. Uh, so and also this dies probably. So this is not good. Okay, there might be some more complicated variations, but yeah. So most likely, I thought he would play something like this because in this case, if I try this, um, it's getting into trouble. So I'm not sure whether this move is played actually or not, but I, I knew that this move is played after. And uh, I don't remember the exact variation. Uh, no, probably not like this, definitely. But anyway, uh, so the idea you can try to run here and also have many friends in this area. But after he played this move, I've realized that yeah, I have all of the chances. So I can try to, to live in the corner uh, on the side. Meanwhile, I still have an option trying to uh, run here. But if I played this move, then he just uh, he could just close things, or maybe even like just like this. And yeah, so for for a noob like me, this is untouchable. So this is not probably as good. Uh, but uh, I do dare to play here. And he uh, tries to split. And I'm going here. And again, uh, I say like, okay, so this stone might be dead. Um, this is not exactly the, what uh, Baduk Doctor calls as the Lisa tail. Uh, but sort of a similar principle, I believe. So I take this stone lightly and also this stone lightly because I know like, okay, I just run along uh, because my ultimate goal is the corner. But if I do invade there directly, this might be like, you know, <laughs> uh, easy to kill. And even if I manage to survive, there would be just a couple of uh, points and not reducing things much. So I keep running here, I attach from below. My idea is to play here to form the Tigeth Mouse, try to go towards the center, try to connect with my friends. If nothing else, ideally try to invade into this area to destroy all of this territory. So uh, he uh, wants to capture my stone. I, uh, I want to capture his stone in return. He captures my stone and I play my Tigeth Mouse here, okay? So I say, I. At this moment, I didn't really dare to uh, go to the corner. I thought that maybe not. But he plays this move, which I, to be very honest, didn't see. <laughs> yeah, so I play another Sente move here. So you say, like, okay, you take this, I take this. Maybe a better idea would have been to play from, uh, not from here, but from here. I think this is better because if it takes here, I just take here and look. So, But, but then he could play like this. And, you know probably that wouldn't be that good. So it's hard to judge. After I could have tried to attack this, but well, that's not my level, you know. So I played this just from the simple, based on the simple observation that uh, I can try to connect here and at very least my group would be alive and I can make some noise here even if I don't have much. So uh, like this, all right. And here I had a di di dilemma. Uh, uh, whether to play um, Dilemma Dilemma, I'm not sure how to pronounce this I, forgot. Uh, I, I, I could play here trying to save uh, trying to connect, make sure, but again he just blocks and that's it so I dare to go even further okay, and now he makes use of this and he cuts my group so at this moment uh, this, this may die, but take stones slightly, stones are not your kids okay so one sente move to make sure that, uh, I don't know why, I just like sente moves. Yeah, probably trying to invest another move to uh, to make this look like a close territory one day. He takes, and now I have a double Atari. You see, I have a double Atari. So these stones are going to die. But if I try to save them, he plays here and he kills the entire group. All right. 
So say I try to do this, he just plays this, and I try to play here, and he plays this, and then what? I don't have space to make two eyes here. It's not. Say even if I play here, he just plays here. Say I play here, he plays here. Somewhere I could probably play here, but uh, this is probably not enough to, yeah, this is not enough. So just here, and say I try here, 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 and that's it. And this is that. So that was crystal clear to me. Even with my poor reading skills, that was crystal clear. So I obviously didn't want to save this stone. So I say, okay, so you want to try this. So if you don't do this, then maybe after this move, if I play even here or here, then it has more chances to make a living group here and also may take a couple of points here. So I say, okay, you want to grab my stones? Please go ahead. And he... <laughs> He got tempted, so he's trying to grab this stone. I think double terror would have been better, but his idea is probably just trying to, again, to split my stones. But at this point, I played this huge move. Yeah, so now the entire corner is mine, and I'm perfectly alive after this move. So a few more moves, and yeah, you see, like, I grabbed so many territory here, so many points, just because it was hunting my stones instead of trying to not allow me to take the big go. So sacrificing stones is something that, you know, uh, the stronger player you become, the more likely you consider your stones. So all these games are about taking your stones lightly and sacrificing your stones for some positional advantages because stones are not your kids. That's really easy to to say, but that's not that easy to uh, start applying in your very own games. And to me, this happened in a very interesting way. Yeah, so then we just played a few more moves. And to be very honest, you know, um, I didn't even think I'm leading at this point, you know. I was extremely happy about the invasion, successful invasion in here and making so many points. Uh, but I thought maybe, you know, maybe this is big, maybe like this. So, yeah, I, I because he was m like much high, high rated than I. Uh, yeah, so th this is a tricky move. But in this case, like here, for instance, uh, I didn't make a chicken move like this. Uh, I calculated things and I make a normal move because this doesn't work simply. All right, so this is why. So if his stone was here, this would work. If his stone is not here, is not doesn't have enough time. Now another threat, he wants to play here next move to capture these two. And I'm I would probably still live, but I have troubles, so I give him more points. So I uh, protect from this, so it's no longer going here. Now he wants to capture this, but I'm uh one move faster. So I live perfectly. Great. Then uh yeah, establishing territory a bit more. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't think this is a chicken move because some RG like here could probably be possible and make some uh, bad things to my territory, so I don't think that was bad. Okay. Uh, now again, here I probably, yeah, Engine said that I could just block, and this is, let's see, so if I just, here I play here. So let's say he wants to... Do this horrible thing and I do like this and simply it's not enough time uh, maybe here so this is not working you know and yeah so he's just dead he is just dead yeah so this is not working but yeah he play here actually played a chicken move uh, because I thought yeah I'm playing the stronger opponent this would be very uh, peace enough if I just <laughs> uh, lose so uh, like some big groups I just play here instead he makes use of it and cuts my six points here but I thought yeah maybe that's the least evil okay and uh, yeah just just safety chicken move all right and here is interesting. Um, I could just split here, 
but I thought that maybe, maybe he can play here then. And I was afraid to lose this stone. So I just, I decided to take this card away. But then he makes another threat. So it's threatening to take this two stones. So I need to protect. And then he threatened to take this three stones that I also need to protect. And now these two points are the eye. So wherever he plays, I play the other side. So he plays here, I play here, I have two eyes. He plays here, I play here, I have two eyes. So, uh, yeah, this is a life. So another, uh, so this was, this wasn't really like life and death problem. Maybe this was, right? So now I'm, I make sure that I just have two eyes. Since I don't pretty much have anything to do, I just kill this stone as well. Okay. And yeah, game over. And yeah, uh, I'm very honest with you guys. I Since the rating of the opponent was much bigger than mine, uh, I thought he is like a done level, a done level player. Although this is not this is not true. If you have a look at this game, so it's definitely a Q player. But anyway, um, I was very surprised when I saw the score. And here, black is winning by ten point five. Uh, on the on the actual website, play okay, that was seven point five because uh, probably the, the value for the comment was a little different uh, as opposed to this particular uh, Sebaki Geo application. But anyway, so. This was this was the game. So this is the, the latest game I played, and probably the best game because uh, probably this was the strongest opponent I managed to uh, win against. Now let's quickly summarize uh, summarize all those uh, principles that I've learned and some key thoughts. So I really wanted you guys to see the games to see uh, this kind of evolution. I think the evolution is seen even through these four games that I've shown you. So um, I would say there is one big issue with uh, the Western understanding of the game of Go. Because what the Western consciousness is trying to do, I'm, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, it's hard to say, uh, yeah, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, I do Chinese Qigong practices, internal practices for more than 15 years. So I'm really into Asian stuff uh, in terms of like how their consciousness work, how they practices, uh, lifestyle, etc. So I really like that. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, still more like European than Asian. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, so uh, Western consciousness uh, is about to divide and conquer uh, techniques and principles that are available in uh, available in Go. Like uh, there are many nice lectures, like Nick Sebeke, for instance, or many other bloggers, who just try to break down things like what you need to do in the opening, what you need to do in the middle of the game, how to fight, how to make a good shape, how to uh, play Josekis, how to approach from the right side, how not to memorize variations and try to apply the general principles and how to make it more precisely over and over again, how to take stones lightly, etc., etc. So many principles, but uh, just learning this principle, just trying to apply those principles, that was my approach. I was like watching tones of videos, um, uh, trying to memorize tones of information, but that never worked because once I started playing, uh, it didn't work. So I'm watching someone's game. I, I understand uh, with, with commentaries. I mean, uh, I'm watching the pro game review with uh, someone, a uh, YouTuber. Uh, I, I can't understand and follow along because he explains every single thing there. But when I play my very own game, it sucks and it just doesn't work properly. And I'm making horrible mistakes. I can only realize that I play that I'm playing a horrible go, despite the fact that it seems like I know something already and it's. Ex extremely devastating when you like you see that your opponent might be not as knowledgeable as you but just because he practiced more because he played like five thousand games uh it's just playing better because he has some practical skill so your knowledge do not work so i just want to give you an example so you imagine that you are learning to swim but without ever touching the water so you're like uh, on the beach uh, and you're lying on the chair uh, with your belly. So chair, you lie on the chair with your belly and then you try to move your hands and feet as if you were imitating the moves uh, while swimming. That's what uh, learning go in the West looks like to me. And that's the approach. So they teach just to, you know, um, 
try to learn to swim without ever touching the water. And on the other hand, on the contrary, uh, what Asians do, so no racism here, uh, absolutely, but what Asians do, they do practice things. They are great practitioners, and we need to learn this from them. So they just play tons of games. Uh, well, they also solve tons of uh, life and death prob- problems, Tsuma goes. But uh, it, that's not the main point, I think. It's not their main strength. It's just a way of practicing, let's say. But they play many, many games. And when you start playing many games, all these principles they teach you, you are starting absorbing those principles, like revealing and realizing those principles naturally by simply practicing. And like, if you don't have this practical experience of playing, uh, I will now try to describe w- what kind of playing is that and how exactly I managed to develop this. But without this practice, no matter how many things you know, uh, that's pointless. those are just pointless knowledge because you're not capable of applying those knowledge in your actual games. So that's not working simply. That's the idea. So in order to make it somewhat usable, uh, you need to be ready internally for that knowledge. And uh, yeah, like say say invasions, you know, if you watch Baduk Doctor's lecture on invasions, well, he teaches invasions as a nine dan uh, player, online player. Uh, he's probably, yeah, he mentioned seven dan amateur player in Korea. That, that's quite good because he can beat Cho Chi Kun, believe it or not, in 10 uh, second game, like 10 second per move. He has many games with Cho Chi Kun on his channel and he beats Cho Chi Kun in, in this uh, crazy fight. That's amazing. So he's like, he can beat a nine dan pro, not just a nine dan pro, he can beat a guy who was like, the best ever go player for for a long time in the past is very strong. So when Baduk Doctor uh, explains how to um, you know how to properly do the invasion somewhere, it's in some particular situation. He brings so many complicated variations that you are simply not ready enough. Uh, for those variations, because you don't even understand the building blocks from which those variations are actually built. And uh, that means that if you encounter a situation in your game and one single stone would be placed differently, that then those variations you've learned from Baduk Doctor would not get applied. You will just lose. Uh, instead of this, wh- what is a good thing? You need to understand these, uh, like trying to every single variation you see, if you break that variation down and try to reveal the building blocks from which that variation is built off. And then just seeing that that's uh, uh, two things. So uh, good shapes and uh, proper use of sensei moves, of forcing moves, essentially. So if you uh, have a good shape... Uh, and say you have some cuts to exploit, and then you're not just exploiting random cuts, but uh, using this principle, make noise on the east to attack on the west, uh, because in Go that has the particular implementation, you're just uh, making uh, an Atari from one side, opponent uh, defense, you make an Atari from another, I mean, there might be even a double Atari, then you can exchange this either for uh, running away to make a living group or just to attack or to surround or whatever. So those are the building blocks no one really is teaching you. But it's really impossible to teach that because these things are happening during the game every time in a different way. So you just need to have to obtain that natural feeling, that natural uh, kind of uh, skill to uh, handle that. And that can only be uh, achieved by playing games. And in that case, those variations start making sense. But when when you understand these building blocks, you can reveal those understanding by your very own self. Because uh, you know, you if you know programming language, you can code. Okay, but uh, just learning variations is like you don't know how to code. You don't know the operators. You don't know uh, variables. You don't know data structures. But you're just trying to. Uh, copy someone else's code and to, to get exactly the same result. But if you have uh, different uh, ideas to implement, uh, then 
the code that you've grabbed is not going to work. And if, when it comes to trying to change someone else's code, you're not capable of doing that because you don't know how, because you don't you don't have the very basics. The same thing applies to Go. So you really need to make sure that you do understand those tiny little building blocks from which those complicated variations are actually arising. Once you do understand those building blocks, you can create your very own variations uh, within your very own games. And depending on your level, the level of those variations would be growing as well, because Bad Exacta is uh, presenting variations from the perspective of the nine down. That's very high level. That's really hard to understand. So if you're a cute player, your variations would be much simpler. But it depends, like, your practical strength depends on how likely you would be able to uh, create this variation within your very own game. That's very important. So one last thing I want to mention, and it can't be uh, uh, emphasized enough, actually, is how, like, I say you need to play lots of games, but uh, there is a problem. So when you play lots of games, you usually lose. And for me, like... Despite these games, uh, I won four games, but I lost, I don't know, hundreds of games. So this this tiny wins is nothing compared to those games that I've lost. I'm losing very, very lots of games. And when you're losing a game, it's really demotivating in terms of like, oh, okay, I'm lost again, again, I'm losing, losing, losing. So what to do? So you need to set up a goal for a game. And you need, like, when you start the game, you need to make, you need to understand that uh, most likely I would lose this game. And you, do, you need to accept this. And you say, okay, I will lose the game, but I don't care about this much. What I do care, I just, uh, I've learned something. I want to try out something. So let's say uh, the goal for this game, I want to invade the corner and try to make a living group there. And I can lose everything, everything else, but I just want to practice invading the corner. And I had games where I was just practicing invading the corner, okay? And if I do manage invading the corner, I th I, th I say, okay, this, this game did make sense. And even though I lost that game, I don't care because my goal has been, fu has been fulfilled because I didn't manage to invade the corner. Or you can try to uh, have a goal, try to uh, play for a shape. So you just build in shapes on the board. You may lose points. You may not do well, but you're building shapes that, eye-pleasing that you like how they look that might be another thing or you may try to connect uh, all your groups together or you may try to practice attacking a single group that that is also this one of the most complicated topics to me but also possible so trying to attack the group so you may it, it might happen that you kill the group but you lose the game but if your goal is to attack the group then you just do practice this attacking the group and don't care about anything else and then suddenly uh it just happens that all these things are coming all together and this uh transfers into a, this practical playing strength and suddenly uh like you don't know how to fight you know some tactics like ladders or nets or whatever or taking sente but you don't know how to fight but suddenly when you see that someone is weaker than you you see like, oh, he just made a weird move. And you just suddenly realize, okay, how, how can I punish this? Yeah, I know how can I punish this. I can do here, play, play, here, here, here. And, and yeah, and I capture his group or capture his stone or, or just invade or whatever. So that's how it's working. And one last thing, uh, probably the most important one. So I was doing lots of chess in the past and I, have, and I had a teacher uh, when I played chess. And the great benefit for me was that he gave me the basics. I didn't have the luxury of having a teacher in Go and no one showed me the basics. I was and still am picking the basics from various sources, mostly YouTube videos, like watching uh, like pro games, etc. And uh, the hardest thing to learn is the flow. Uh, some, somebody called the flow reading. Uh, I didn't understand this read what the reading actually is, like uh, calculated in the variation, like in chess, for instance. But I would say that reading is uh, not just calculating variations, because uh, calculating variations only applies to forcing sequences, say when you uh, in a capturing race or when you solving the life and death problem. That's only one part of reading. But I believe that. Uh, trying to play uh, the big place in the opening is also sort of a reading. So you say, okay, I play here where my opponent would most likely play and why. And when it comes to 
when you do understand that he needs to play there. And if it doesn't play there, that this is bad because you can take the bigger place yourself and then you would be just better. That's also reading. So it's really about the flow of the stones on, uh, on the board. So uh, this is the most uh, mysterious thing, I would say. And I just want to reveal my very own secret of how I, uh, not for a reason, this happened eventually, accidentally, I would say. So uh, I mentioned chess. In chess, I only played Blitz. I never played uh, long series games because um, I just, uh, I've been taking some existing patterns and that was fair enough for me. I could beat uh, 2,000 player, sometimes even uh, 2,100s player. Uh, but uh, my level was no more than uh, 1,700s or maybe 1,800s. So not that much really. Uh, but when I managed to get a certain type of position, I was confident enough and I was like uh, doing well in that position. But chess is much simpler than Go. So in chess, I was playing Blitz because uh, I knew the territory and that was just a matter of like uh, what you can do within uh, this the given pattern. In Go, patterns are much uh, more complicated uh, as opposed to chess. So in Go, uh, there was enough for a reason, but I stopped playing slower games. So at playok.com, I play 15 minutes main time plus five minutes uh, Yoyomi additional time. And even then, now that seems like too fast for me. So now I feel like maybe I would like to play, I don't know, 30 minutes per game, maybe even more. So I caught myself uh, thinking about a single move uh, for a long time, thinking about the single move for a long time, and uh, I've realized that I do enjoy that process. I really do enjoy uh, this thinking about variations. I don't know if that can be called reading or what, but one last thing I want to emphasize is that playing, uh, like thinking about moves for a long time, it's not like... Uh, you don't have to think much, they say, if you're a beginner, you don't have to think much about the moves because you are thinking about uh, weird things that do not work. And I wasn't do this like specifically. It just started happening. So I was playing, 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 and then I realized like, okay, so uh, if I don't think I play this, this, and this, and this would result in this, this, and this, because if you lose 100 games in exactly the same manner, then when you, then like the instinct would be to make this another one lose and move. And then you think, okay, so if I play like this, then I know from my experience that I would lose because of he plays there, there, there. And then you start thinking, okay, then where should I play then? And then this reading or thinking or whatever, it just starts naturally. And the move that you come up with after might surprise you, yourself, uh, even might surprise yourself because, yeah, you might play the move that you would never be thinking of earlier. And don't be afraid to experiment because uh, it's okay to play the move and just to see what happens. Because it's way better to uh, achieve, uh, to obtain those techniques uh, practically. Because if you just blindly play those techniques without pretty much sensing them from within, this is not going to work. So this is what's uh, different uh, for Asians as opposed to European people. So you just try to sense everything on your own. And if you're sensing this, then you're naturally coming to all those complicated topics like shapes, uh, taking center moves, and whatever theory you may come up with. This is it from my side, guys. Uh, please kind of let me know in the commentaries down below the video whether this uh, insights that I came up with uh, for about two years of studying Go uh, useful to you or not. But again, two years is like I started learning Go about two years ago, uh, but I started about a couple of months uh, two years ago, then I had a big gap because we're having war in Ukraine, so it wasn't really much about playing Go. Now I have some spare time, so now I have uh, an option to start to go a bit more. So I started another couple of months. So no more than like, you know, maybe half, not even half a year.